Hello and welcome to the last and final episode of Smart Money this calendar year. The last one year for the markets was phenomenal, to, so to speak, because uh, the Nifty, while uh, you know most global markets saw a fall of about 10 and 20 percent, the Nifty actually gained about five odd percent. So in the global context, ours was the cleanest shirt in an otherwise dirty laundry basket. But how is 2023 going to shape up, and what should you do to protect your portfolio? What are the themes to look at? Gurmeet Chadda, managing director. Uh, Managing Partner and CIO of Complete Circle Consultants is our guest on the show. And Gurmeet is going to help us with a couple of themes that you can look at to build your portfolio in 2023. Gurmeet, uh, thanks so much for being a part of the show. Wish you a very happy new year in advance and, uh, you know, greetings of the season to you. Uh, tell us a little bit about, about what 2023 can look like and from an investor's standpoint, what should one do? Uh, uh, thanks, Sonia. It's, it's always a pleasure. Uh, I think uh, it's it's been a good year considering, as you rightly mentioned, what uh, uh, 2022 has been globally. Uh, uh, global markets correcting, oil prices high, war, uh, re-emergence now of COVID cases. So anything that could go wrong has gone wrong. I think you you got to be more balanced in probably the first half of the of 2023 because I think we're still not done away with all the rate hikes. I think probably uh, the peak would probably be reached in February, March in, in our sense. Uh, uh, and that's still that time. I think you should be a little cautious in terms of deploying incremental liquidity, uh, be more staggered. Uh, as I said earlier, the cost of not doing anything today is seven and a half percent in a government bond. Uh, so have a more balanced approach. And I think second half of the year, I think is where I believe the inflation numbers will start coming down. Uh, there are pockets where earnings growth would be pretty, uh, you know, reasonable. In fact, in some cases, twenty percent plus. And I think that's those are the spots, you know, probably we'll discuss as we as we move ahead. Uh, in the show. Okay, so without wasting any time, there are four or five themes that Gurmeet is going to talk about. So let's get straight to it. Gurmeet, tell us, what's the first theme on your list? Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I've always been accused of being favorable to banks because I'm an ex-banker, but I think this cycle is, is favorable despite a good 2022. Uh, I, I always discuss all-time favorites. So let's start with something which I've, uh, which I've seen some turnaround this year is IDFC First Bank. So the efforts they've been putting over the last few years since the merger is finally now uh, getting reflected in the price. So if you see the retail book is now more than two-third. Uh, their CASA ratio when the merger happened was hardly 7%. It's now upwards of 50%. Uh, the infra book and the corporate book, which, which was 2022, 3%, is now up sub 5%. Uh, and the high cost borrowings, which, which were legacy borrowings, is being continuously you know, replaced by CASA and retail term deposits. So last quarter alone, if you see, uh, they replaced almost 2,000 crores of high cost borrowings. So I think they have a smart strategy in place in terms of getting a nice liability side franchise. A great digital stack abilities, which I think will, will, will scale up. And if you see, they have also a very nice mix of retail loans. So there was, if you see last quarter, 40% growth in mortgage, working very well on the credit card side, rural finance they, they're focusing on. So it's a very good retail mix. And I think at just one lakh crore retail loan book, I think there is there is scope to probably grow. So this is one bank probably you will gradually see return on assets improve to one and a half two percent. Uh, they just have to be mindful of a couple of large corporate accounts, which I think could potentially create stress. But I think there is there is further rating due. I think for for IDFC first. Okay, so that's the first theme and the first stock that we're looking at for 2023, IDFC First Bank. But uh, you want to, you know, uh, sort of balance that out with something a bit more stable in the banking space, considering that you're a bit more conservative in nature. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I, I've been an investor and ex-employee of SDFC Bank for, for more than a decade. I think it's long overdue uh, for, for, for some performance. I think the merger overhang should go. Uh, if you see the management uh, commentary, they are actually running two, three months ahead of the merger, uh, uh, you know, deadline. I think it should happen probably in Q2, early Q2. And I think I've never seen SDFC Bank at 2.4, 2.5 book value. I think it's if you see last 20 years, it's called a 20% bank. Uh, they have grown profit 20% in 18 out of 20 years. Uh, they have never gone below 2% GNP in the last 20 years. You know, gold standard, underwriting standards. Uh, if you see consistently, you know, they've been growing. In fact, they've been now focusing on corporate and the commercial banking book in addition to, you know, the retail book. And at 15 lakh crores to grow 20% uh, with this credit underwriting, I think, speaks volumes about the ability. So I think this technical overhang should go. Uh, and I think bank can probably regain some of the old multiples it used to enjoy. 
so that's one bank I think which is still reasonable and I think there's a lot of synergies which will happen uh, once once the merger goes through and there is some embedded value in subsidies also which I think could, could act. In fact, my sense is when the merger goes through there could be some near-term upside also uh, in, in the bank. Okay, so that's two stocks in the financial theme that you like which is IDFC First Bank and HDFC Bank. Let's move on now Gurmeet, what is theme number two? So I think this manufacturing push, uh, uh, Sonia, we've been discussing throughout the year, in fact, more than a year now, across, uh, you know, industrials, across defense, across textiles, electronics, I think this continue will do well. I think the manufacturing landscape is changing. Uh, there is government policy push, there is PLI support, there is China plus one. So, you know, everything is coming together. Uh, one thing which I like is, is, is actually, a, uh, you know, proxy play to manufacturing is industrial gases. Uh, so, Linde India, uh, you know, uh, after the integration with Traxel, will have 50% exposure to uh, market share to industrial gases. Industrial gases are largely your nitrogen, oxygen, uh, hydrogen, argon, etc., right, which, which has end uses in, uh, you know, metals, uh, petrochemicals, glasses, textiles, everything, a wide range of uh, end uses. They are also into specialty gases, which are, you know, high purity ones like helium, uh, etc., uh, neon. And then they are into medical gases as well. And as manufacturing picks up, as we see, you know, its contribution going up, India gaining share, I think this is one uh, one good way of playing it. Great return ratios, uh, good governance track record, slightly on the expensive side still, despite 20-25% correction uh, from 4,000 plus levels. Uh, so maybe a staggered uh, approach here would, would, would probably be better, maybe a one-quarter approach uh, in terms of accumulating this. Okay, so that's on Linde India. Interesting, uh, a shift from your usual stock ideas. Anything else that you like within this space? I think uh, uh, one of the old one for which, uh, you know, I, I've been talking about you of this stock for, for a couple of years now. It's been a, almost a four or five bagger for us in the last two years is this defense play and in, in solar industries. I think I think it's, it's made an all-time high today. Uh, I was watching, the, you know, just before the show started. I think I think what I'm happy is despite this growth, you know, we are projecting about 45% uh, uh, EPS growth for next two, three years. Uh, so industrial explosives continue to grow at 15, 20%. Volume growth is what management is indicating. Uh, the defense in the overall revenue mix is, has a possibility to touch 20%. Uh, they have you know, 30% kind of a market share in explosives, 70% in exports. Uh, and they are into, you know, fast moving and consumable defense goods where, you know, which has a very good impact on working capital and return ratios. They also have the exclusive technology transfers for Pinaka rocket and Brahmos uh, propellant and couple of drone technologies. And there is a startup ecosystem they are playing through Skyroot and, and, and some of the others. So, so look, still good slope despite, despite the, uh, the, the up move there, uh, so, yeah. Uh, you know, the only problem with solar industries, as you said so yourself, it's been a four-bagger, right? So, one would think, am I getting in too late into the upcycle? Uh, what's your view there? I mean, do you think there are better opportunities in this sector? Or do you think one should just stick with the winners? No, there are. There are a couple of more opportunities. I agree with you. As I said, if, if you can justify, as I said, a 50% EPS growth, I think uh, the current valuation multiple can sustain. But if there is any disappointment, then of course, there could be near term. But as I said, the, the defense part of the portfolio can actually surprise on the upside. It's currently just about 400 to 100 crores and this, the potential is to probably 2,000 to 1,500 crores. And that can have significant operating leverage. And their overseas businesses also now are, are getting streamlined and they're getting into new geographies. Uh, and my sense is we probably see industrial revolution too with the kind of supply bottlenecks and, and China plus one playing out. Okay, so there's this manufacturing theme, right? I mean, you spoke about uh, a couple of the stocks here, whether it's solar industries. You also gave us a couple of banking names as well, IDFC, First Bank, HDFC Bank, and Linde India. So it's four stocks done. In this manufacturing theme, anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, so uh, another area which I think is, is textiles, which I think, and textiles is quite a fragmented area. There are knitted garments, there are uh, apparel exports, and, and there are, you know, people who are vertically integrated, there are lifestyle brands. So, so my sense is that, uh, uh, you know, so uh, by one name which we like uh, since 2018, when the, once the turnaround happened, this has been Gopal Das Exports, because the new management MD came in after the Blackstone exit. Uh, it's, it's done very, very well. Uh, this year could be a slightly challenging as U.S. slows down because 80% of the uh, business comes from U.S. They are they, they have clients, market clients like H&M, Gap, etc. Uh, they almost do 36 million pieces. Uh, uh, last year they did almost 250 million dollars. 
I think the, the, the UK FTA could be a game changer as and when it happens. I think we're very close to that. Uh, where that is where we have a slightly disadvantage, especially on apparel exports. Also, the PL, it's, it's one of the beneficiary of, uh, you know, one of the PLI schemes. And again, this China plus one playing out. Uh, still reasonable on valuations. You could probably have a soft Q4 uh, as the guidance given by the management due to, you know, headwinds in US. But as I said, this is more, more long term and, and they're expanding. Uh, the capex which they are doing can probably add another 14, 1500 crores to the turnover. Okay, and one of your favorite stocks in this space is Uno Minda. Uh, at what point do you say, you know what, I, this is it in terms of the rally. I mean, Minda has given great returns. This year has not been too good. It's sort, sort of consolidated in 2022. But at what point do you exit good stocks, Gurmeet? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Sonia, as I said, that, uh, you know, big wealth is made in, in waiting, right? And, and, and just keep adding, uh, you know, what you like over a long period of time, as long as, you know, earnings are supportive. Uh, and I think uh, Minda has more legroom because if you see, uh, so their market, so I call them automotive solutions provider, not, not just an auto ancillary. Uh, so they're clear leaders in, you know, which is non-EV portfolio, which is horns and switches and, and you know, uh, car seats, etc. Alloy wheels now, they're market leaders. Second, they are second, uh, they are second largest in airbags, air filters, etc. which airbags will become compulsory next year. And then they have this EV portfolio, which they are much ahead. So on smart plugs, on, on sensors, on battery management solutions, they're much ahead of the competition. And my sense is the hit value can actually become three to four times. Uh, so probably a good time to exit could be 2025 in my view, uh, considering that we have uh, you know seen significant consolidation. Uh, and I think I've not seen any company, uh, you know, they have 72 manufacturing facilities, some 17 JVs. I think the way they've been innovating and, and adding more content per car is, 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 is quite amazing. Okay, so these are the stocks that uh, Gurmeet has spoken about. These are the big themes to watch. Remember, they are not outright recommendations. They are only themes and some stocks that you can look at. IDFC First Bank, there's HDFC Bank, there's Linde India, Sola Industries, Gokaldas Exports and Uno Minda. We'll do one thing. We'll take a short commercial break. Some more stocks to go. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a bit with Gurmeet Chadha.